Welcome to PTV's 62nd Grammys preview show. My name is Ben Harris and we're going to be going down all of the awards that everybody's looking forward to for this weekend's Grammy Awards. Beside me on my panel are Veronica Gale and Cameron Boss. Guys, how are you doing and how much are you excited for these fantastic awards? Feeling good. I'm really excited. Anytime the Grammys comes around, it's always an exciting time. So can't wait to see who wins. Me too, Ben. Couldn't be more excited. Got a lot of different options here and a lot of different awards to give out. All right. Well, I think we should just get into our very first awards. All right. First up, we're going to discuss the record of the year. We've got a ton of great candidates from Bon Iver to Billie Eilish. Who do you guys think will be taking this one home? I have to say, I think it's going to be Old Town Road. Um, I don't want it to necessarily win. I'd rather see maybe um, Khalid or Post Malone win, but I think it's going to be Old Town Road, mainly due to the fact that when you see kids listen to this song, it's uh, insane. It's the most viral song of all time. It's going, it's blowing up the charts. My little sister listens to it. My parents love it. It's a song for everyone, so I think Old Town Road's going to take the cake. Like, it, it's literally the ultimate meme song. Absolutely. It started just as a meme and it's turned into literally the biggest charting song of all time. It, it spiraled out of control and now spiraled into Grammy contention. So we'll see if Old Town Road can take home best record. But Cameron, what do you think is going to take home best record of the year? I couldn't agree more. Got to give it to the Old Town Road. They really did right. take this horse to the maximum road. You see, <laughs> The way I see it, something that sounds like something that was almost a McConan mistake, right? To go this far off of just videos of horses. How, how on earth did we wind up in school audiences like this? Everywhere, everyone knows this song of all ages. It has to win, it has to win. All right, well, I think that Old Town Road won't be taking home best record. I do think it will get some awards, but I think this one's going to be a surprise because I think Billie Eilish is going to dominate a lot of categories. I think Lizzo is going to dominate a lot of categories. But I think this award specifically is just going to be kind of like a random one in retrospect where Khalid actually takes home the award for his song, Talk. I mean, talk about a fantastic hook. Great Can song. we just talk? Like, it's so great. I, I don't know. I think this is going to be a surprise win. In my, I would probably prefer... Hey Ma by Bon Iver, or maybe Sunflower by Post Malone and Sway Lee, but I don't think that one's going to get that many recognitions because of like it being a soundtrack song. Uh, I just think there's going to be a stigma from the Academy about it, so uh, I think Khalid might take this one home. But moving on to our next category, we've got Best New Artist, a ton of great acts in a wide variety from bands like Tank and the Bangas to Maggie Rogers and Lizzo, but... Veronica, who do you think is going to take home Best New Artist? I really think um, Billie Eilish is going to win, but I really want to see Lizzo take it. Um, I like her I like her last album. I really like the positive message about it, kind of like love yourself, don't worry about a man. It's, I feel like it's, a, it's an album for the ladies, so mm -hmm. sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, I'd really love to see her win, although I do think Billie Eilish is going to take it. In, in my opinion, I just think... Out of this class of new artists, Billie Eilish is an absolute superstar. She's going to be huge globally within the next year. I mean, she already is massive in the States, but I just think she's going to be one of those transcendent artists that's just a massive phenomenon worldwide within a couple of years, and she's only 18. That's crazy. crazy. She's going to be a superstar for the rest of her life. Well, the way I see it, I couldn't disagree more. Lizzo, the queen, she's got to take this one. <laughs> Reason being, she's carrying this torch of huge female rap coming in right now, like Veronica mentioned. We got artists like Megan Thee Stallion also under that belt. Let's see how far it can go. Hopefully, if Lizzo takes this award, it can go even farther. All right, I think we're going to move into our next category, pop solo performance. Who had the best pop solo performance? So who had the best vocals on their own track where it was just them? I think, once again, you're going to sense a theme with me here. I think Billie Eilish is taking this award home for Bad Guy. That song is huge. She sounds fantastic throughout the cut. The editing is really cool with uh, her vocal modulation. So I think Bad Guy is going to take home this award. 
I have to completely agree. I think Bad Guy will take it. I also just like the song, something about the beat, like you don't want to dance to it, but at the same time, like I'm bopping my head mm -hmm. when I hear it. And I don't know, it's just interesting. It's such a different song. Mm -hmm. It's, I feel like, different than everything I've been listening to recently. It's, so. It was very groundbreaking for the pop atmosphere. I have so. to agree. So I would say Billie Eilish will be taking that one. You need to calm down. <laughs> By Taylor Swift should take this award, in my opinion. Reason being, the performance was all there. Lots of talent was put into this one. I don't feel like the same amount of talent was maybe put into Billie Eilish's. All right, all right. Now, for pop duo performance, or group, or group, who do you, Cameron, think will be taking home the Grammy for that one? There's a lot of great pop songs that were made by an accompaniment of people. Who do you think's taking this one home? Oh man, oh man, what a combo, but Old Town Road. Do I want Old Town Road? I don't think I do. Personally, I would like to hear Sunflower win this award, mm -hmm. because, I mean, come on, that song, it starts off, and you're already in the mood. Old Town Road, however, does have the same effect, Got to give credit where it's due. Two juggernauts coming from out of nowhere on the same track like that, pretty big deal. Yeah. Veronica? I have to disagree. I actually think Senorita is going to take the award. Okay. Mainly, I know um, you're a big Shawn Mendes I'm girl. a big Shawn Mendes girl. It is true. But um, it was I Googled what's the most streamed song for Spotify for 2019, and Senorita actually was the really? most streamed song, which was shocking to me. I wasn't expecting that. I would have definitely that. thought Old Town Road. I would have thought I as well. I would have thought the same thing. So yeah. it was... Really interesting to me to see that. Also, the whole chemistry between Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello. Well, I mean, it's hard, been... it's hard not to have chemistry when it's with the person you're dating. Oh, right? absolutely. But uh, it's been, the, it's been like almost like a meme kind of like going around, okay. which has given the song a little bit more hype. So I think... A little bit more spice, too. Yeah, so I think Senator is going to get it. <laughs> uh, I think that Sunflower is going to get this award. I really think that uh, even though the Grammys doesn't love to give, like, promotional songs that were like tied into big uh, budget soundtracks, a lot of love. I just think Sunflower with Post and Sway Lee is just a fantastic song. It's very upbeat from the very beginning. And uh, I, I don't know, it's just a great song. Now, moving on to pop vocal album. I think Billie Eilish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? is going to, once again, Billie's taking home another award. So, what do you guys think is going to win Best Pop Vocal Album? Um, I have to agree. I do think Billie Eilish is going to win, but I really would love to see it go to Ariana Grande with Thank You, Next. Mm -hmm. I love a lot of her songs. They're like the messages for the, so the title song, Thank You, Next. I love that song. Yep. Seven Rings, Break Up With Your, Boy Break Up With Your Girlfriend, I'm Bored. Th three great songs, I think. So, I'd really love to see her win. I also really like her voice. She's got a different sound. So, I would like to see it go to Ariana Grande. All right. Thank you. Next. Should win the award. <laughs> That's the way I see it. I see Thank You Next as a little bit of a lackluster project overall, but what it did, it slapped in my, in my hard and humble I opinion. I think it's a good album. I just think Billy's a bigger star and is going to have a bigger outreach after this Grammys, so I, I do think there will be a little bit of industry work trying to push this young artist into the spotlight. Excellent so, point. Uh, yeah, that's a good and, point. I mean, the Grammys isn't known for its uh, non-biases, so. Uh, this is true. I, I, I really think Billy's going to win a lot of awards this time around. But on to some more categories. We're going to move into Best Alternative Music Album. We've got all sorts of great nominees from James Blake, Bon Iver, Vampire Weekend, uh, Tom York of Radiohead, uh, and Big Thief. And that's who I think is going to win with their fantastic album, UFOF. Unidentified Flying Object Friend. I love this Big Thief album. Big Thief released two albums this year. Uh, this one first, and then their album Two Hands, and I love them both. I'm a huge Big Thief fan, so I'm being a little biased on this one, but I think UFOF is going to take this one home. Listen, I've got a lot of love for all these artists, but Ben, you know who I love the most? Mm -hmm. It is Bon Iver. I, comma, I, what an album. It's all about unity, community, happiness, and respect. We got to get that message out there. This would be huge for it. And I know the Grammys does like Bon Iver. It's been there before. It can happen again. Yep. Even more than that, I think Father of the Bride, it, it might just sneak in an award, but I don't want it to. I don't think it should. I don't think it's as good as UFOF really? or I, I. You didn't like Vampire Weekend's album? 
Not a huge fan. I, man, Ezra, Ezra's just so good. I, I don't know. I really like that album a lot. I see it a little bit as a letdown a little from really? the password. Okay. They were holding that torch way up high, holding it down Man, for New York. as soon as these cameras cut, we are fighting. Wow. Yep, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Don't want to be in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica, what do you think was the best alternative album? Um, I wanted to pick James Blake just because I feel like he's pretty popular right now, so I think mm -hmm. they might give him the win. Yeah, I really liked that James Blake album, some cool features from Andre 3000 and Travis Scott. But... On to our next album, we're gonna go with Urban Contemporary. Who had the best Urban Contemporary album? In my opinion, I think just because she might miss out on a few of Billy's categories, I think Lizzo will be taking home this award, even though I think out of these uh, nominees, I think either Jesse Reyes or Steve Lacey might have had a better album in my opinion, just because I'm not a big Lizzo fan. I didn't really resonate with the album. I didn't think it was uh, as good as it's been hyped up to be, so. I don't know, I, but I do think Lizzo will take home this award. I have to completely agree. Um, I do think the Lizzo has been a little overhyped, but I really like the album. I think it resonates more with the female audience, Right. but um, I just think it's going to win. Okay. That's mm. the one. You know what they say, the truth hurts by Lizzo. It should win this category. I absolutely agree. All right. Up next, we've got Best R&B Performance. Some awesome nominees. This is one of my favorite categories, from Daniel Caesar to her to my favorite artist in the whole world, Anderson Pack, and also one of my new favorite artists, Lucky Day. Lucky Day's album is so, 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 so good. I really enjoyed Painted. So I think it's either going to come down to Come Home by Anderson Pack and Andre 3000. Andre 3000 had the best rap verse of the year on this track, putting it in stone. That's the best verse of the year. His cadence, he finds the pocket so well. Uh, I love that song. So it's either going to be Come Home or Roll Some Mo for me, but I hope it's Come Home. Shout out, Pac. Got to agree. Best teeth in the game right there. Anderson mm -hmm. Pack is smiling right at us with that one. It is an absolute pathological bomb. That album is great. The song shines. Almost every song is smooth like butter, and I couldn't agree more that it should win an award. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. Um, same album. Come home, definitely gonna win. All right, now on to best R&B song. We've got some heavy hitters in this category. Chris Brown and Drake with No Guidance. Emily King with Look At Me Now after her awaited return. And then of course her who's been a powerhouse these past two or three years. So I think this award actually will be given to Lucky Day, the newcomer, the new kid in town. Roll Some Mo is just a fantastic song and I think it deserves the Grammy for it. Couldn't Veronica? agree more. Um, I have to go with No Guidance, Chris Brown featuring Drake. First off, it's Drake. Everyone yeah. loves Drake. And um, I just think that's one of the songs, when that song plays, I'm immediately dancing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll be dancing around my dorm, dancing around my house. So I just think No Guidance is going to win. All right, Cameron. Well, you got it, girl. Is not what I will be saying when this does not win, because <laughs> I don't want it to. See, the way I see this, I got to agree. Roll some more. When I heard those vocals, golden. Mm -hmm. Chef's kiss. Now, on to the best R&B album. I think my guy, Anderson Pack Ventura, his second album released that in this period. Uh, first came Oxnard, then was its R&B follow-up, Ventura. And every single track is so smooth. They all lead into one another. Great features from all sorts of different artists, from Andre 3K to Brandy, like just all sorts of R&B heavy hitters in there, and I just think Ventura was Pac's second best project behind Malibu ever, and Malibu's literally like my favorite album of all time, so uh, I think Pac's taken this one home and well-deserved. Gotta agree. I find that Ventura was just absolutely unique in Anderson's own discography and in general. I thought that it does stand out from Malibu, and Malibu is a treasure, but I think this one is a, needs more attention due to how mm -hmm. just honest it is, honestly. Very underrated, honestly. I completely agree. Ventura is going to win. Um, a lot of good features, and it's just a great album. So mm -hmm. really see it taking the cake. Now, on to best rap performance. A lot of just absolute bars coming in here. Middle Child by J. Cole. He invented a flow for this one that's been copied all year long. Everybody's ripping this thing off. Then Suge by DaBaby. 
huge track, monstrous. Like, it blew up. This man has had, like, I'm shocked the baby didn't get nominated for Best New Artist. He's been huge. I, I heard a controversy that he's, like, he only wasn't nominated for Best New Artist because, like, he had released, like, a certain amount of mixtapes before he blew up with Baby on Baby this year, but uh, it is what it is. Then Down Bad from the Dreamville album with J.I.D., just an awesome hook on that thing. Racks in the Middle with Nipsey Hussle and Roddy Rich, rest in peace. And then Clout with Os uh, Offset and Cardi B. I feel like that's kind of an outlier in this category. I, I didn't feel like that was stinker. that impressive of a big song. Big stinker. Like, I don't know. that it, All the, re the rest of these songs make sense for being nominated. And I think the ones that's going to win is Down Bad. I think J.I.D. went in on the hook. Boz, J. Cole, Earth Gang, Nudie even. Like, everyone just really, it, this one hit home. This, it, it's hard. This song's hard. Absolutely, gotta agree, but I gotta give credit where it's due. The fact that the baby, if he does not win, will have to try even harder next year or next season coming around, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm terrified. These are gonna be the hardest bars you've heard in a while on huge mm -hmm. production tracks as well. These things will blow out your speakers, but I gotta give it to Down Bad. You have to. I would like to see the baby win. I feel like he was snubbed a little in this and he should have been nominated for more stuff, so the one award he is nominated for, I'd like to see him win it. So. Yeah, of course. Uh, our next category, best rap sung performance. I'm easily, easily going with DJ Mustard's track with Roddy Rich, Ballin'. I mean, Roddy Rich is the crooner of the year, right? Like, literally, rap sung performance is a category for this man. He is easily the best rapper and singer from to come out of this past year, besides, of course, the God future. Uh, but I don't know. It, Ballin' is a hit. A, I, that song's going to be played at my wedding, man. That song is so good. <laughs> Count me in. But at my wedding, Drip Too Hard will be there. All I right. Could not, I could not surpass Drip Too Hard. Lyrically, Gunna, come on. This, when you think of Gunna, you think of this song. Mm -hmm. The drip really was just too hard. You might mess around. I don't know. I think of that uh, Colors performance when he did Top Off. <laughs> I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> I have to agree with Ben. I think Ballin's going to win. I think yeah. it's a great song. It's a fun the song. The sample is so perfect, I too. agree. It's, it's amazing. So mm -hmm. I definitely see that one. In. All right. Up next, we've got Best Rap Song. ton of huge name nominees in this one from the newcomer YBN Corday to a song with Rick Ross and Drake, two of the biggest rap powerhouses of the past decade. So, And then, of course, Nipsey Hussle and Roddy Rich again. Shug by the baby, just a lot of good nominees. But I think, I think the one that's gonna win, Twenty One Savage and J Cole. A lot. That song took Twenty One Savage to a new level of popularity within the mainstream, especially when this was like one of the first couple songs that came out of his uh, ice arrest. He was really in the spotlight, and he really showed out and showed that he has bars with the best of them, including one of the best lyricists of our generation in J. Cole. The way I see it, Sugar's going to get snubbed. But it is for a good reason. I agree. A lot really propelled 21 Savage to the next level, and this is going to be his moment. I completely agree. I think a lot's going to win. 21 Savage, he's killing it. So. All right. So best rap album. This is a huge award, a lot of heavy hitters in here. Even a newcomer, YBN Cord shout out to YBN Corday, man. He came onto the scene out of a crew atmosphere and really propelled himself above the other YBNs in Namir and Almighty J. I just think he has this next level of stardom, especially within his lyricism, that's going to make a huge impact on a lot of people for many years to come. So shout out for him to him for getting nominated on his first album ever. Uh, but I think this category is easily going to go to Tyler, the creator. Tyler, even though this is uh, nominated for a rap album, Igor is not a rap album. But it is the best album in this category. And I think it should have been nominated for best album. But that's, that's just my opinion. How did we get this far? First and foremost, vote Igor. Second, yeah. vote Igor. <laughs> this album, thematically, kind of a masterpiece. This is 
arguably the first time in a long time we've seen Tyler the Creator fully, fully execute an idea of his. And he does create things, but one thing he's known to create is albums that weren't fully fleshed out. This time he went all, all above and beyond, went to the maximum he could, made the whole thing himself practically, and I think this should win. The fact that it was nominated for this category, a little skeptical because some, some tracks on this are not really meant for, you know, people that are looking for a show by the baby. You're not going to find it on Igor. But mm -hmm. this, this album should find an award. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have to completely agree. Tyler, the creator, I believe, should win. Also, this, this song was all over social media. You're checking Instagram stories when it first came out? Every single one. Yeah. Tyler, the creator. Tyler, the creator. Like, it just blew yeah. up. Yeah, every song on Igor was super popular from Earthquake with Playboy Cardi to all the way down to A Boy's A Gun. There's just so many great in-depth tracks that are all so thematically squeezed into this fantastic album with a fantastic story about love and uh, just relationships in general. I, I just think there's nothing more this award, uh, this album deserves than a Grammy Award. So, But up next, we're actually, I mean, I don't know anything about rock or metal music. I know you don't. I know you don't. So we're going to send it to our rock and metal expert, Valentino Petrarca, for his own segment, Val's School of Rock. Thank you so much, Ben. I'm Valentino Petrarca, and I will be discussing the rock and metal categories of the Grammys. So to start us off, I noticed that a lot of these categories, before I even go into the list, have included a lot of indie rock and alternative rock, but not that much elsewhere. So there's not really any punk, pop punk, post-hardcore, or metalcore. So that's one of the biggest flaws I'm going to see going into this, is overall the lack of diversity in the rock scene. So we're going to start off with best rock performance. So the categories are... Pretty Waste by Bones UK, This Land by Gary Clark Jr., History Repeats by Brittany Howard, Woman by Karen O oh and Danger Mouse, and Too Bad by Rival Sons. So now, all these are phenomenal songs. They really are really, really good songs and incredible. Personally, I wish, for my personal picks, that Too Bads by Rival Sons win. Rival Sons, they just crafted an incredible album that is very blues and hard guitar and really captures that classic rock sound by adding new elements in. That record has a lot of personality to it. What I think will win, though, most likely, will probably be This Land by Gary Clark Jr., which is a great song, too. Incredible lyrics. I will say, though, that it is more alternative than rock, and you know, just because you have a guitar in it doesn't really make it rock. I'd consider it more of an alternative song, but it is a phenomenal song with incredible lyrics. Up next, we have Best Metal Performance. Now, the categories for this, we have Astralis, by the, uh, Astralis the Great Octopus by Candlemass, Human Side by Death Angel, Bow Down by I Prevail, Unleashed by Killswitch Engage, and Tempest by Tool. Now, again, these are all phenomenal songs. Before I even dive into this list, I do have to say, no Slipknot, no Thy Art is Murder, no Knocked Loose, especially Slipknot. Slipknot is one of those metal bands that truly defined the genre and made one of the best metal albums in the last decade. I know We Are Not Your Kind peaked on the Billboard Hot 100, not even of the rock and metal charts, of just the Hot 100. So I feel very confused why the new Slipknot record is not even recognized in the slightest. By Ours Murder came out with a great record. That should have been in some way or another a nomination at least. And Knocked Loose is bringing these young kids, these teenagers, these young fans to hardcore music for the first time. They've got that youth crowd with them. So a lot of great records. Personally, I think out of all of them, Unleashed by Killswitch Engage is the best. I would want the Grammy to go to that one. Um, I think it's the most well-crafted, and I think it's Killswitch's best song in years. Um, what I think will win, though, will probably be Tempest by Tool. Usually when bands take these big gaps between albums, especially Tool, where they've taken so much time with every record they've crafted, I think that uh, they're going to give Tool that record because of the amount of time that it took. Again, Tempest, in my personal opinion, is the best song on that record, Fear Inoculum. I think it is a great song, but I don't think it's Grammy-worthy, especially compared to a lot of the other ones. Up um, next, we've got Best Rock Song. So the categories for the, the nominees for here are Fear Inoculum by Tool, Give Yourself a Try by The 1975, Harmony Hall by Vampire Weekend, and again, This Land by Gary Clark Jr. Now, this category in particular is more indie and alternative, and there's really not that many other really rock songs on here. I know for a fact, Pup dropped their album Morbid Stuff, one of the best punk records I've ever heard in my life, never mind just this year. Bayside dropped in Terrorbang, an incredible record with a lot of emotion and depth, and it really just fired on all cylinders. 
so many good stuff. And I'm not saying that these songs aren't great. These songs are phenomenal. But they do lean more towards the indie sound and the alternative sound than the rock sound. Um, I personally think Give Yourself a Try is the best of these categories. I think the 1975 really crafted something unique with this one. I think it's a phenomenal song. It's very catchy. Despite having a very simple guitar verse, it really kind of, it's got a rhythm to it and it really just, it builds. Um, I do think though that Fear Inoculum will win by Tool again because of this large album gap. Uh, Fear Inoculum is a great song. I don't think the two minute bongo solo is necessary. I think it's kind of a bit much. But um, that's what I personally think. Up next, we have the Best Rock Album. Now, the nominees for here are Ammo by Bring Me the Horizon, Social Cues by Cage the Elephant, In the End by The Cranberries, Trauma by I Prevail, and Feral Roots by The Rival Sons. Now, um, again, I know that we've talked a lot about the mislabeling in the genre and all that stuff. Ammo by Bring Me the Horizon is a pop record. Yes, it has two rock songs on it, but those two really, it has, you know, Mantra and Wonderful Life, but overall, you have way more pop songs on it than rock songs. You know, I apologize if you feel something. Fresh Bruises, oh my gosh. All these songs are just very, Medicine is another one. They're great songs, and it's a phenomenal pop record. I think in terms of pop, Bring Me the Horizon really have become like a powerhouse, and they really are incredible. But it's not a rock album, so I really don't think that should even be on the list at all. Don't get me wrong, phenomenal record. Up next, we have Social Cues by Cage the Elephant. Again, that's more indie. I would say, I, don't, I wouldn't really consider that like a, a rock record, but it is a great record. I do enjoy that record a lot. I think they're going to give it to In the End by the Cranberries. Personally, and this is just my own personal taste, personal choice, when you have an artist that releases something posthumously and kind of it's after their death and it's a tribute to them, I, I'm a little against that in the sense I always say I'd rather the artist kind of die in peace. I don't want them to you know, dig up old studio tapes kind of like they did. I think it's a phenomenal record. I love it, and I think it really is a great record. But I just think that overall, it's I'm against releasing stuff after an artist has passed away. I think that's kind of a, a little bit of a cheap shot. Um, personally, though, I think I would want Trauma to win out of all these categories. I think Trauma is a great one. Or either Trauma or Feral Roots. I have those tied, to be honest. I think those are very, they're both very good in quality, and they're both just got that spark of creativity and originality to them. Now. Before we, like, now this will wrap up the rock segment of the portion, but just some bands that kind of, I, w I wouldn't say got gypped, but I think that at the end of the day, deserve more credit. And if they were going to go into a more indie sound, you could do bands like Grayscale with the album Mila Vida. Absolutely incredible record, phenomenal production, songwriting, lyrics. It really has the whole shebang. You have The Main, You Are Okay, the new Bad Flower record. Oh my gosh, the new um, the Morbid Stuff I Said by Pup. Death is a Warm Blanket by, my, uh, by um, Microwave. That record right there, it's more hard rock, a little bit of post-hardcore elements, but I think that that could have been considered for best performance or best rock song. We have High Crimes by The Damn Things, Hello Exile by The Menzingers, Panorama by La Dispute, and even Order and Decline by Sun 41. There were so many good albums, and I understand with such a large vast of albums released in 2019, it's tough to pick down. But I do think a lot of the songs that they chose here were more indie than they were rock or metal. All right, so I'm going to throw it back to Ben now with more of the Grammy discussion. Val, thank you so much for your rock expertise. I'm sure all of your album predictions are going to be very accurate, and I hope your winners are the ones that win. But up next, we're going to get straight back into our categories, which we're going to start with best country song. Veronica, what do you think was the best country song of the year? I personally think the best country song of the year, Speechless Dan and Shay. I mean, first off, it's Dan and Shay. Everyone loves a little Dan and Shay. I know they're technically not the most country, mm -hmm. but they, I think that they are very country pop. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would consider them more of a country pop. But since they're country pop, I think they might win because they reach a broader audience. Mm -hmm. Like I'll be listening to Z100 and Speechless is playing. So I feel like since the broad audience they reach, I think it's really gonna win. Okay. Okay. Cameron. Bring in those flowers. That's my pick. Very emotional, pretty solid track. All right, I'm going to agree with you, Veronica. I think Dan and Shay's uh, widespread availability and popularity because they are uh, such a great fusion of country music and pop music is it just gets out to a wider audience and more people enjoy the songs. So uh, I think Dan and Shay's Speechless is going to win that award. As for Best Country Album now, uh, I think there's a lot of great nominees, some 
uh, new faces, some old faces. I mean, Eric Church, perennial, Riva, perennial. T Tanya Tucker's in here, so uh, just some very familiar faces in this category. But I think the award is going to go to the Pistol Annies, which is Miranda Lambert's group. I think their album was fantastic. I just really entered. Uh, inter uh, I was very entertained by Interstate Gospel. I think uh, their group makes a lot of sense, and it was a very good album. I think I have to go with center point road Thomas Rhett. First off, Thomas Rhett, popular guy, so that definitely helps. Handsome fella. I Handsome agree. Fella. I have to agree. The song "Look What God Gave Her." I mean, every girl wants to be the girl in that song. <laughs> it's just it's it's a known fact. So I have to say, center point road Thomas Rhett is good to win. All right, Cameron. The big three. The Pistols, got to go with Ben on this one. All right. On to the best electronic and dance album. I think for this, for this one, I really enjoy a lot of electronic music, and I think Flume with his high This Is Flume mixtape blew it out of the water. Just, oh, such great songs on there. My, one of my favorite songs of the year, like period, is how to build a relationship with him and JPEG Mafia. JPEG Mafia is also one of my favorite rappers, so I just really enjoyed that project and thought it was a great mixtape, and I think it should win Best Electronic Album. So, way I see it, this thing <laughs> smacks. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Just listen to track one and two. You don't even have to hear the rest of the thing. Tracks one and two alone deserve awards. Hi, this is Flume. Hi, this is Flume. Hi, this is Flume. That's all you're going to hear in your head after you hear these tracks. This deserves an award. Couldn't agree more. And Peggy, JPEG Mafia, absolutely killed it on the feature. <laughs> Veronica, who's your pick for best electronic album? I have to agree with the group. Um, Flume's going to win. Sorry I don't have as great as intro as that. But um, he's making waves in the genre, so I really see him. Pull right. the win. Cool, cool. Now on to our best Latin rock, urban, or alternative album, giving Latin music a shine in the normal Grammys as opposed to the Latin Grammys, which, uh, did those already happen or are they upcoming? I'm not sure. Either way, this category is loaded with big names from Bad Bunny and J Balvin to uh, newcomers like the um, mariachi quartet of uh, Flor de Tolache. I, I think I pronounced it right, but uh, in my opinion, far and away the winner, even though it probably won't win because J Balvin and Bad Bunny are just such a worldwide power duo. I, I think it should go to El Malquerer uh, by Rosalia. I think that album is beautiful. She's one of the best singers in the world, just an absolute stunning voice, impressive vocal performances throughout the album. I, that was one of my favorite albums of the year. She, her singing is just so beautiful, and I think she deserves the Grammy. Um, I went with Oasis with J Balvin and Bad Bunny just because they are such a power duo. I mm -hmm. feel like they're probably going to take the award. Putting this genre on the map is important, and I love that we always have an opportunity to do this, but putting it on the map is exactly what J Balvin did here. I've read so many countless tweets of the representation J Balvin brought with this project in the past year. i got to give him an award for that. All right. Perfect. Now on to our next category. We're going to go straight into the best reggae album. And I think hands down, easily, the youngest uh, nominee in this category. And in my opinion, one of, the, one of my 15 best albums of the year was Rapture by Coffee. She's making huge waves. She's just a young... Uh, is she 19 or in her early 20s? Either way, she's super young. She's making huge waves within reggae, mixing this modern atmospheric hip hop with reggae sounds. And uh, I just think her album was very, very good. Stream Rapture by Coffee. I just, it's a great album. Fully agree. Coffee's an amazing artist. I got nothing more to say that you didn't say already, Ben. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with both of you. I agree. It's probably going to win. So. Yeah. And now on to giving the man behind the scenes a little love. Producer of the year, non-classical, of course. I think easily one of the biggest influencers in pop music of the past decade. Jack Antonoff is running away with this award from his work with Taylor Swift this year to his work with Lana Del Rey this year and countless other huge pop megastars, and of course he's talented on his own with ventures in bleachers and fun, so I think 
Jack Antonoff, especially for his work with Taylor Swift and Lana Del Rey this year, is going to run away with uh, producer of the year. I completely agree. Have the same pick. His work, again, with Taylor Swift and Lana Del Rey, mm -hmm. amazing. I have a warning for all of our viewers. Do not let Phineas win this award. <laughs> Reason being, Jack Antonoff coming off of an amazing Lord project just a year ago to now, Norman Rockwell, I have to absolutely give it to Jack Antonoff. Mm -hmm. This man, I don't understand how he comes up with such emotional, powerful ballads time after time. I wasn't even huge on Lana Del Rey until the Jack Antonoff spark hit that coil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, on to our last like relatively small or award best music video who had the best music video of the past year in my opinion i think it was the old town road official movie like making it a cartoon or no yeah no i don't think so the, well the thing is it's confusing cuz there's like eight old town road videos and versions of it but i think old town road just made such a big impact with all their video i've seen all the videos that's why i'm confused by them but they were all fantastic and i think it's one of the bigger songs of the year so maybe not as much credit to the actual video itself but more to the power of the song itself and its popularity, just amassing millions upon millions of views on YouTube and uh, Vimeo and all those services. So I think uh, Old Town Road is going to win uh, Music Video of the Year. I have to completely agree. I also love that they call it an official movie. I think that's so funny because <laughs> it's only five minutes. It's really not, it's not a, like a two-hour thing. But it's just, a short film. It's a cinema. I guess it's like a short, yeah, I would call it a short film, but an official movie is just funny to me. So I would have to go with Old Town Road. Mm -hmm. Five minutes is all it takes to listen to Cellophane by FKA Twigs. That five minutes will have you sitting right here, like I am, talking to you about FKA Twigs. Amazing, flawless new video for Cellophane. I 100% would give this award to Cellophane. Yeah. The artistry behind it, the technical direction behind it, the talent that goes into it, it's phenomenal. And Old Town Road will probably win. Yeah. But Honestly, does it deserve it? I, I agree. I think it's going to be Old Town Road's award, but I think Cellophane probably should win it. I think it's the best song out of uh, these choices and it, definitely the best video itself. But I just think based on popularity and uh, alone that Old Town Road's going to win. So but yeah. on to one of our biggest final two categories, the ones we've all been waiting for. First up, Song of the Year. We're going to list all the nominees. Always Remember Us This Way by Lady Gaga, Bad Guy by Billie Eilish, Bring My Flowers Now, Tanya Tucker, Hard Place by Her, Lover by Taylor Swift, Norman Effing Rockwell by Lana Del Rey, Someone You Love by Louis Capaldi, and Truth Hurts by Lizzo. Ton of powerhouse nominees in this category, one of the biggest and most stacked categories, and mostly women. All women, one guy, huge category, ton of huge songs. I think the ones that's going to take it home, Billie Eilish, bringing home yet another award on Sunday night. I think she's just going to absolutely run through the Grammys, bring home an armful of awards, and I, I think Billie's going to win. I have to completely agree. I do think Billie's going to win. I would, though, love to see it go to someone you loved. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I think that song is stunning. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's that song plays in your heart, like you, f your heart melts a little for the song, so. I would love to see it win, but Billie Eilish is probably gonna take it home. Let's all agree on one thing, though. The photograph of Lizzo. Small pocketbook in one hand, Grammy for Truth Hurts in the other, that's a future I want. And Ooh. that's why I want Truth Hurts to win over Bad Guy. That's true, that's Really true. tough competition between these two powerhouse songs. Mm -hmm. All right, lastly, we're gonna get into our final and biggest category of the year, Album of the Year. We've got I, I by Bon Iver, Norman Effing Rockwell by Lana Del Rey, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go by Billie Eilish, Thank You Next by Ariana Grande, I Used to Know Her by Her, Lil Nas X's debut album, Seven, Cause I Love You by Lizzo, and Father of the Bride by Vampire Weekend. Awesome, awesome list of albums. Kind of missing, uh, you know, Igor, you know, the real best album of the year. But, uh, well, it, the best album that would is nominated elsewhere. In my opinion, but, uh, pers actually, let's do this. On a personal level, don't worry about the nominees for a second. 
what was your album of the year? Because for me, it was Bandana by Freddie Gibbs and uh, Mad Lib. Hmm. Way I see it, I might have to give this one to Bon Iver, I, I. Once again, tackling huge, huge issues such as climate change and rallying against bigger problems in life. Huge hits on there, I Am I, uh, Ye, the intro track as well. Really interesting production behind that one, Salem. It's all about acceptance and moving on. Gotta that's, love that theme. That's interesting that your your uh, pick actually made the list. That's that's great for you. I hope Bon Iver does. I hope Justin does come out and win that award. Uh, that'd be great. He hasn't uh, come out with a victory in a little bit, but he has wild, been nominated yeah. a lot of times for Twenty Two A Million, and of course, this album's gotten four or five nominations. So, uh, Veronica, what was your album of the year personally, and then from this list? Um, I really like. Where is it? I thought Thank You Next, Ariana Grande's. I would like her to win. I just mm -hmm. think it's a fun album, and it got really popular, especially at the end, sort of like the end of last year, like with the whole breakup with Pete Davidson kind of like skyrocketed the album a little, mm -hmm. so I could see that winning. So that's my pick. Personal level and for the awards? Personal level, I don't know. I do like a lot of these. I really like Lizzo's album, mm -hmm. which is nominated. So um, the guy who plays Dear Evan Hansen on Broadway used to, the original, okay. Ben Platt released an album. Fantastic album, completely blanking on the name, but I do really recommend. I would have loved to see that. Perfect. Get some awards. So. Well, I think the winner for this category will be Norman Effing Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. Fantastic album throughout. Great themes, great production from Jack Antonoff and Lana herself. And it's really just pushed her career into this revival that no one was really expecting after uh, Born to Die flopped a little bit. But I think those are our picks. And lastly, we wanted to get into some of the live performances that will be happening at the Grammys. And we wanted Val to come join us and discuss the live performances as well. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Getting great to good. see you guys. How's everyone doing? Good. Doing, doing awesome. Good. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so... For the live performances, we've got a ton of them from Aerosmith and Run DMC, all the way down to Tyler, the Creator, and the Jonas Brothers. So a huge variety <coughs> of different acts that will be on display at the award show on Sunday. Cameron, what's one or two acts that you are very excited to be seeing? Right off the bat, you want to see energy like you haven't seen since Kendrick Lamar performed at the Grammys? Vote Igor. I mean, come on. This is going to be a powerhouse performance. He's going to run out of breath, but the whole time that crowd will be shouting with him for Igor. Igor, although it is all about heartbreak and becoming the monster that you fear the most, whew, that's going to be a tough performance to beat. Absolutely. I agree with you. I think Tyler's really going to make a huge impact on this Grammys. I think there's going to be a lot of excitement around his performance and what he could possibly bring to the show. Veronica, what's the performance you're most excited to watch? I would love, I'm so excited to see Demi Lovato. Mm -hmm. I think she's, as an artist, kind of almost a little underrated. Her vocals are insane. Yeah. Her, her last album, I, I can believe, see is that. called Sorry yeah. Not Sorry. Like, that was a great album. Her range in that is fantastic, so I'm super excited to see her perform. I'm also really excited to see the Jonas Brothers. I've been a Jonas Brothers fan since the beginning, year 3000, like, that was my jam. So I'm really excited to see what they perform. And I also really like their new hip, hit, What a Man's Gotta Do. It's a really good yeah. song, so I really love that they perform it. I'm excited to see what the Jonas Brothers are going to do on this big national stage when a lot of people really haven't seen them since they were uh, teenagers. They've had this big resurgence with their uh, regrouping this year and their new album. So it's going to be exciting to see what they can do on like one of the biggest stages in music. Val, what performance are you looking forward to most for Sunday's award show? Uh, that's a really tough question because there's so many awesome performances. I will piggyback off of what Veronica said. Um, Demi Lovato has incredible pipes, so I know that regardless of what she performs, it's going to be done vocally really well, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Of course, me being the rock fan, I am Aerosmith. I cannot wait to see. They've been around for so many years, and yet they still have that capture and that magic of just captivating the crowd. So um, I'm curious to see you know, if they still got it, and I'm sure they do. Um, and then the other one, purely from a curiosity standpoint, Billie Eilish. Again, we've talked a lot about her music, how it was so significant, but it really was 
a pretty dark album as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see how that translates live at the Grammys. Yeah, I think she's going to do something huge. I think there's going to be a lot of spectacle around her performance. I think it's going to be just very dark and interesting artistically. And I, I think her performance is going to be something mm -hmm. very interesting and captivating. Especially because the Grammys typically are very high energy, high happy. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a great time, a fun time. And from what I understand, a lot of Billie Eilish's music is very on the more tonally dark side. Mm -hmm. Even like even the lyrics are upbeat, it's still, you know, like that. So I'm curious how it's going to go over among the fans and just to see what she's got to bring to the table. Right. I think the performances I'm personally looking forward to the most are Tyler, the creator, as you said, Cameron, as well as Rosalia and her. I think her deserves a ton of shine for all the work she's put into the R&B genre these past couple years uh, from great covers of uh, her what really made her big initially was her cover of Drake's Jungle but then she's really blown up and become her own fantastic artist getting nominations the past two years and just putting in great work year after year I'm also very excited to see Rosalia on stage like I talked about earlier she has some of the best vocal performances in all of music last year. I just, I'm really excited to see what she can do on a national stage and uh, with an international audience watching the Grammys as uh, a Latin singer. So I'm very excited to see Rosalia. I'm very excited for her and Tyler, the creator. But I think that's going to wrap up our show, guys. I think uh, we just have to wish good luck to all of the nominees. We're very excited for this upcoming Grammys show, the 62nd show ever, and we wanted to wish the best of luck to Pirate Television's own Eric Lag, a Seton Hall graduate who worked on Lil Nas X's Old Town Road. I think all of the versions of it. So good luck to you, Eric, and enjoy the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.